Whether you're looking to leave less of a carbon imprint, save the planet for future generations, or are just like me and hate waste, today I'm gonna to share 10 ways that you can start cutting down on waste and living a more sustainable and self-reliant lifestyle. So let's do this. I'm Gina, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. Today we're gonna to talk about ways to begin a sustaining lifestyle. Tip number one is start composting. Studies show that Americans waste like 40% of our food. That is so crazy. And a large portion of what goes in the landfill is actually our food scraps, and that's a shame. We throw away all these food scraps, but then we turn around and spend all this money on good soil that someone else composts when we can do it ourselves. Even if you don't like to grow things, you can start composting and just putting your food scraps in the yard to fertilize the land and leave it a better place than you found it for future generations. So all you need really to start is a bowl on the counter where you put your banana peels, eggshells, your coffee grinds, your bills of your apple or whatever. Anything that is not meat or dairy pretty much can go in this food scrap pile. Some things because they have antimicrobial properties like onions and garlic are a little bit slower to break down and might inhibit the rest of it. So you might wanna leave those out, but do your research on this. They will eventually break down. Start keeping a bowl on your counter and then when it fills up, you can just, if you have a place behind your fence that isn't offending anyone else and you're not worried about rodents, you can just start dumping it there. That's how I started. If you don't do anything and you don't know anything about composting and you just do that, it eventually will break down into earth without you having to do anything. I have this on the counter stainless steel compost bucket, which has a carbon filter. I love it. I don't smell it. When it fills up, I just go out and I started with just a pile in my backyard and then I ended up putting some chicken wire around it to protect it from rodents, although I never really did have a problem. But then I graduated to this compost tumbler because I like things neat and in order. Plus it's super easy. You don't have to turn it or anything like that with a pitchfork. You can just roll it and over time it will break down now with compost the order for it to break down quickly you need a certain amount of browns to greens and greens are like your kitchen scraps and grass clippings and brown is stuff like boxes that you get from amazon is any bedding wood chips things like that and you need to keep it moist and you need to aerate it once in a while if you have a tumbler you just give it a spin a couple of times a week if you have a pile and you want it to break down faster, you can just go out with a pitchfork or shovel and just turn it a couple of times a week. It's really super easy. And what you end up with is this, this beautiful soil that you can fertilize your garden with or potted plants or give to somebody that is going to fertilize. Or maybe you just want to add it to your own yard. Maybe you have some rose bushes that you're not growing a vegetable garden. But if you have a vegetable garden, all the better because this stuff is what will feed your soil. Another big waste that we do in our country, which can be completely avoidable, is these here plastic water bottles. So what a racket the water industry is, right? They sell us tap water in these plastic bottles that just go in the landfill. The first ways I started switching to a less waste and more sustainable lifestyle was getting these reusable glass bottles on Amazon. They didn't come with these wraps on them. They came with um, just the glass bottle and then you can order these separate. If I've had these for years now and I just carry them around and I love them. Not only am I saving money, but I can feel good that I'm not taking up landfill with plastic. Next is cooking in. We spend a ton of money and a ton of waste on eating out these styrofoam containers. Cooking might not be your forte. Once you learn a few basics, cooking is really not difficult. One chicken that you buy can turn into three to four meals if you know what you're doing, and I'll do a video on that soon. So for $6 and then a few extras, you can make delicious, healthier, lower calorie meals for your family. Now I know I eat out also. One of the things I feel so bad about when I eat out is that there'll be leftovers that I really want or I hate to go to waste, but I also hate taking that styrofoam container home with me and just throwing it in the trash. It feels awful. 
So why not bring different sized Tupperware containers when you go out to eat in a discreet bag that you carry over your shoulder just like a purse? And when the waiter comes to wrap it up, you put them in there. And that way you don't even have to feel bad about the leftovers. And even if I'm not going to eat my leftovers, I have chickens, I have dogs, and I have a compost bin. So I will take home almost whatever leftovers I have. And speaking of chickens, why not consider backyard chickens if you even have a small city yard? I have had chickens now. I'm going on my second year and I was so scared to start because I thought there was so much I didn't know, but it's super easy to learn and they're super easy to care for. They just add something to your life and I don't know how to explain it other than they just give me great joy to see them and to care for them. And they're really not much work at all but they make great composting systems. They give you container-free eggs that you can eat or share and compost the shells. Even if you don't like to eat eggs, if you have dogs, they love them. And it's a healthy addition to their diet as well. I love backyard chickens. Um, they're wonderful. We talked about composting, that if you don't want to bother with a compost pile, you can fill your compost bucket up and you can just throw it in their enclosure and they will compost it for you. You wait a few days to a week and you'll come out and they'll have pretty much composted everything. And chickens not only will compost the food that you put out there, but also they poop a lot. And that poop is once aged about six months, it makes amazing free fertilizer for your garden so that you don't have to go out and buy it in bags. Now, before I go on to the next tip, if you're new here, please consider subscribing, click the bell notification so that you don't miss anything. And if you like to read, please do check out my books, Think Jody Pico Meets Nicholas Sparks Family Drama. My next tip is start transitioning off of paper products. Some of the easier places to start would be replacing paper towels with stacks of tea towels that you wash as you use. I've done this for years and it has worked out great. Also go to linen napkins if you can. It's a little bit more of an expense up front, but you can buy them used. Just use them and throw them in the washer. And if you have say 20 of them, you can always keep them in circulation. Feminine hygiene products can be traded out. They do have menstrual cups now that you can replace for tampons or pads. A great investment is a bidet. This one is under 100, works surprisingly well. You end up feeling cleaner and fresher and you'll avoid all those weird toilet paper shortages. One of the biggest things that bothers me that goes into our dumps because it's so copious when you have a baby and I have two that are now grown and for both of them I felt so bad with the amount of these disposable diapers that were going in the trash and my then mother-in-law used a diaper bucket she filled it up with water and detergent she would use the cloth diapers and if she had like a load in one, she would just dump it in the toilet, flush that down and just throw the dirty diaper immediately in the bucket. Did the same thing, I used the wraps that you can get. So all I did was take my cloth diaper, fold it in threes, lay it in the liner and Velcro it around my child. I think it felt softer and I felt a lot better. And that diaper pail bucket, one of the things I was most worried about was that it would just stink and it never did. If it does, you can add a little bit of borax or bleach. And then when that bucket was filled up or I needed more diapers and I was ready to do wash, I would take that whole bucket, water and all, and dump it in my washer and voila. The nice thing was once my kids were out of diaper, I could bleach those and pass them on. Before I go on to the next tip, if you got anything out of this video, please help us out with a thumbs up. Thanks in advance. My next tip is stop throwing away things that are reusable and valuable. One of the things that I think of is I was in the store recently and I saw a jar of bacon fat for like a crazy amount of money. And I thought about all the times I just dumped my bacon fat in like some old can and let it solidify and threw it away. I don't do that anymore, haven't for a long time because that stuff is gold. Dump your hot bacon fat into a mason jar, let it solidify, keep it in the fridge. It keeps for a very long time in the fridge, but it keeps for months at least. And just a spoonful of that in green beans with a little bit of salt and pepper is stupendous. You can also fry your eggs in it 
and use it in place of oil. Again, it's just so crazy to me in this country how much we throw away and then go buy inferior items to replace the things we just threw away. Even the dryer lint can be used to push it through a used paper towel or toilet paper roll, and that makes amazing fire starter for when you're camping or doing one of your outdoor fire pits. There's just so much. I will link a video that I did recently on cycling ideas. Speaking of dryer lint, one way to save not only electricity or your appliance is to hang your clothes outside to dry in the sun. You can use a cheap laundry line, which you can just hook to your house and use as needed. You can use one of these rotary dryers that um, I got this one off Amazon for under a hundred bucks. I love it. It just folds up like an umbrella, folds down like an umbrella. And when you go to mow, you just move it out of the way and put it back up. I absolutely love it. But not only does it save the electricity, it also will make your clothes last a lot longer because that all that dryer lint you're pulling out of the dryer after your clothes are done is your fibers of your clothes that it is breaking down. So that's an excellent way to start living more sustainably. One of my favorite things that I do to live more sustainably and self-reliantly is to grow my own herbs. It's amazing to go out of my front porch right there in my herb garden and pick the cilantro that I need to pick the basil that I need to cook with make mint or chamomile into tea it's so much cheaper if you've been to the store recently to buy fresh herbs they're not that fresh and they're super expensive and they're just the herb garden is beautiful in front of my house now I started out with just these pots up on my porch and I just collected the seeds that I knew I wanted to grow. By the end of year one, I was able to split them, give them to friends, or just make more plants in my herb garden. I also grow medicinal herbs or homeopathic herbs like milk thistle, which is great for liver healing. Things like Heal All, Fever Few. I'll link a video I did on making these herbs into tinctures. Before I go on to the next tip, if you have any self-sustainable ideas that I am not mentioning in this video, if you would please consider putting it down below so that others can read it and get ideas to start living sustainably today. One of the things the pandemic of the last gosh, going on two years has taught me is how vulnerable our food supply is, how we're eating tomatoes that came from Mexico or Nicaragua, whatever. Our vegetables are traveling thousands of miles to get to us. So they're not the freshest by the time they do get to us. And they're definitely, unless you're buying organic or sprayed with pesticides and all these things that we just know are terrible for us. So my next suggestion is to put a few raised beds in your garden. When I started gardening for the first time, I just went right into the earth and digging it up was difficult. And I really got flustered because things didn't do that well. One, I think the price of wood has come back down to a reasonable amount now. So not handy at all when it comes to building things, but all it is is four boards and a couple of screws and then fill it up. That's all a bed is. It doesn't even need a bottom. And in fact, I would suggest you don't have a bottom on these. Um, that way if something has long roots it can get into the earth and expand as it wants to it takes half an hour to build a bed and there is nothing like getting fresh vegetables out of the garden you know you can grow your own sunflower seeds and your own tomatoes and your own make your own salsa and even if you're not big on cooking uh, lettuce is not that cheap and it's so easy to grow in cool weather so I suggest start small if you're new to gardening, but you will quickly get addicted. I started with one or two beds and ended up with 30 something in my new home and an orchard. Um, also, even if you have a small city lot, if you have room for a tree, fruit tree would be a great addition. I managed to fit like six or seven in my little suburban quarter acre. Just start, just get it in the ground. Make sure it grows in your growing zone and just do it. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out one of the other videos that I have linked above and see you next time.